Welcome to part C of chapter 1. And let me tell you, I am looking forward to you having a copy of the texts so we can bring this down to more of the highlights and less of the here's everything in the chapter. In other words, we move more from production orientation to co-production as the semester rolls onwards. So let's talk about services as a process. When we're thinking about the way a service is designed, we're thinking about how the individuals who are involved in the production of the service are going to interact with something. And in this case, we're looking at four different possibilities and four non-exclusive possibilities. So, what is the subject of the service? And these can overlap. So the subject is a person or it's people. An individual or group receives the service. This is going to be a high contact service. This is going to be service interaction. It's going to be very dependent on the people aspects. And there's going to be a lot of emphasis on emotion management, on relationship building. So there's going to be a real distinct flavor to the people-based service. Step down one notch, and this could be about services on possessions. So people are involved. People bring their possessions to the point of the service consumption. But then it turns into a low-contact service because the service is not taking place on the person. And in possessions, we can look at things like shoe repair, dry cleaning, even things like vet services, or even child care. Now, possessions here is a broad generic term for objects, items, living creatures, anything else that the individual who is commissioning the service, so this is where you have that the customer-client differentiation, the possessions are, and the way to think about it is the person who commissions the service and pays for the service is not the person that is being acted upon. So the child and the child care is being acted upon by the child care service, but it's the parent who is paying for the child care services to take place. And this is how you can get around the fact that you have just got to think of people and animals as possessions when that's not always comfortable as a framework and we lack a better label look that's that's the problem here is there's no better way of describing it than people versus possessions so possessions it's low touch to the person commissioning the service it's low contact to the person commissioning the service box number three is the process and the purpose of the service is to create an experience. Here we're calling it mental stimulus, but normally we refer to it as experience. So you go to a festival, you go to a concert, you go to the theatre, you go to the movies, you go to a class. It's about the experience. So you know you're not walking away with a physical ownership of the theatre, of the theatre performance. You can walk away with physical artifacts to indicate that you were there. But really what you're looking for is the memories and the experience. So effectively, the service process is being delivered to take place in your head. Which makes things interesting because then you're really dependent on a lot of the consumer behavior stuff we talk about in the next couple of chapters. And you become very vulnerable to the inconsistency and the heterogeneity. So three people in a room, because it's taking place in their head and the experience has to match and mesh in with their prior experiences, their prior knowledge, their expectations, a lot of inconsistency is inherent in the design of a service process that will result in a service experience. Finally, the fourth element is where the service takes place on information. And this is one of the things that will take place this semester, is if you look at this, as when you present an assignment to me and I mark it and I give it feedback 
and I give an assessment against criteria. On one side, I'm the subject of the service is the information. The subject of the service is the assignment. Simultaneously, for you in writing that assignment, and doing all the readings and doing all the preparation, you have also created an information service. So you can act on a person, you can act on the person's uh, possessions, you can act on the person's experience, and you can act on information on behalf of the person. These are four broad generic clusters. You can also have things happen simultaneously. So you come to a hairdresser's to get the haircut, so it's a people-based activity. Whilst you're there, it's also about the conversation. So you go to this friendly hairdresser who you always like to hear their stories about what they've been up to, so it's an experience. You go to a car mechanic to who will fix your car. At the same time, they have got a setup that whilst you're getting your car in for servicing, they have a deal with a massage parlor so that you get a sports physio massage done whilst your car's getting tuned up. So car and person come out um, with a combined experience. People in possession, simultaneous. You go to an accountant, or you go to uh, you go to an accountant. You are the one sitting there, technically receiving the service, but your information is also getting the service. So you can combine things. So that's the service. The next idea is the service as a system. And once you get good at services thinking, it's really fun because systems themselves are inherently interesting things. A system is a series of event sequences and flows. And systems can be hacked. And that's the whole point, is that you can create a system that's modifiable, customizable. And once you start becoming conversant with the flow of systems, you can start seeing systems in existence and looking for the hack, looking for how could we modify, how could we change, how can we get the best experience out of this, how can we enhance this for others. Now, in services marketing, we use a lot of metaphor. Uh, one of the big dominant metaphors in the whole element is the idea of the theatre. And this is the idea of service as a theatre. So there is the front stage. And the front stage is the element that is visible to the, to the customer. Whereas the backstage is the element that is necessary for the service to perform, but is invisible to the consumer. For example, this set of slides is effectively the front stage. What you don't see is you don't see the preparation behind the scenes. You don't see me reading the text, taking the notes, compiling my slide deck, looking over my readings. You see none of the wiring. You just see the front end performance. Now there are opportunities here once Later in the semester, we start talking about concepts like service blueprinting, where you actually map out the operating conditions and you look at whether you want visibility, where do you want to put the curtain? Do you want there to be visibility into the backstage? Do you want people to be able to see the production as a feature? And this is where you put a giant glass wall on the kitchen. Or do you want there to be a bit of mystique and magic, a black box type approach where you don't see any of the production, you just see the final end. So services, systems, a lot of stuff around the theatre metaphor, and the front stage, backstage concept and division is a really good one to get your head around, because quite often as a front stage employee, the customer shouldn't necessarily know about the backstage, nor do they necessarily want to know. So some of the stuff that you have to do as a front stage employee is keep it keep the behind the scenes hidden, and keep the magic alive. Points of contact, another division. I've mentioned this a couple of times, the level of contact, the high, medium, and low contact. High contact is where there's direct customer involvement. And the tutorials are huge for this. They are the high contact point, because there's direct inter interaction. Medium is where there's customers 
and objects. Um, there's an interplay. Low contact is where it's mostly objects, it's mostly behind the scenes. If you think about car rental, so you go to a, an Avis desk or you go to a um, Hertz desk at the airport, you have a high contact point of you and the customer employee. You then have a whole world behind the scenes, particularly if the car is delivered to the front door of the uh, car park. So you walk in, you check in, you request your vehicle, your vehicle is brought around. There is mostly objects and mostly off stage happening here. You don't see any of it. Dry cleaning, you hand over the garments, you come back in a couple of days, you retrieve the garments. Very low contact. Versus a doctor's appointment or a sports physio massage, really high contact because you are there with the service being produced on you. So what these component parts do is they let us start building maps and frameworks. And we're going to look at a couple of uh, service frameworks. And these are, again, the important thing to understand about these is that these are models of how the world can be seen. So we've got here the service business as system. That we are looking here at lines of distinction, lines of interaction. So direct interactions here are we're trying to deliver a service. We've got two customers, customer A and customer B, who will be present at the same time as the service. So we'll treat this as the hairdressing salon. We have two customers sitting side by side at the hairdressers. Customer A is getting haircut A, customer B is getting haircut B. You'll note the in fact in a action effects, you're both at the salon, so the physical facilities are taking place. You're both dealing with hairdressers, both got the contact personnel. Behind the scenes, what's not visible to you was all the training the hairdresser went through, is what's also not visible to you, depending on your salon, is the booking, servicing, the equipment servicing, the cleaning, all these other elements that took place that you didn't pay attention to because they didn't matter. They are behind the curtain. So this is a crude map of a service, but you'll note a couple of the key important ideas. The way in which A and B interact will influence the service delivery. And the way service B is performed may impact on, on customer A. So say if we're looking at service A and service B being service A is the haircuts, service B is the haircut and colouring. The colouring is going to take longer and may take away the hairdresser that who was going to serve A is called aside to assist with the colouring or mix the colours or do that. So the presence of customer B's order is going to delay the satisfaction and conclusion of customer A's service. So even if the two don't interact, their services have interacted with each other. All right, figure 1.7, let's look at this again. This is a high contact service. This is where, again, we're seeing the theater metaphor and we're starting to see the, the integration of a series of concepts. So to break this one down, backstage is the invisible. This is the technical skill set. This is the technical core. You'll note this is the service operating system. It's the backstage, front stage combined. Service delivery system is the front stage and the customers. And then we have the other points of contact, which is service blueprinting. You can also start seeing the marketing mix emerging here. So in the other customer contact points, you've got IMC, advertising, billing. You also have the uh, services flower appearing there. You have the customers and the customer interaction. We talk more about uh, customer interaction in the second half of the semester. And you have the service scape, the interior facilities, the equipment, and the service staff. So there's a lot of interactions. And the thing about services as a system is that there's a lot of moving parts. If we drop this now down, down to a low contact service, you'll see that a whole series of elements drop off the radar. And on a low contact service, you're less likely to be interacting and interfacing with other people. So you, 
there's a lot more self-service elements and there's a lot more behind the scene lot less there's less front stage on a low contact and a lot more behind the scenes again what we want you to do with these models is see them as ways to think through the world particularly for assessment tasks this is a really good way to start thinking okay. what sort of what am i up against what, what What's my case study or my example, or my illustration, or my question going to need me to think about? All right, the services marketing systems component. Just want to mention a couple of the key points here are things we're going to come back to. So service personnel, there's a couple of chapters dedicated to this concept. Service facilities and equipment, this is service scape. There is a reading and a chapter assigned to it. Communications. This is your integrated marketing communications, this is your advertising. Other people, there's a chapter to customers. So this section of the text, give it a read, give it a look over, but understand it's a highlights reel because this is the introduction where there'll be detailed later in the chapters, later in the book. All right, the last key point to draw your attention to is the services marketing mix. Now, for those of you who have done Introduction to Marketing, you will be familiar with the fact that we talk and mention that there are extended marketing mixes, that there are seven variables, people, process, and physical element. Now, in people, it's customers and staff. In process, it's that link right back to that definition of marketing. And physical evidence it is bringing the tangible elements in that we saw discussed in chapter 1b slide deck and it's also the service environment the service scape which has its own chapter so there's a division here in the text where they start thinking about it in terms of the product is both the process and the people the place is the people and the physical element promotion is very much about the evidence and price is about the evidence and the process. So it's a way to, it's an interesting approach. It's an integration again. It's thinking the four core and the three extended, and how do the three extended interplay and interact with each other. So chapter one, it's a big chapter. Your requirements, your checklist to make certain you've handled it okay this week. Watch the videos, all three of them. Do the readings. Get your, get your readings up and running really early. Again, get your copy of the textbook, read the chapter over. Prep that question, but also prep because you're doing two chapters or multiple chapters. Anytime you've got multiple chapters, always prep all the questions because it doesn't matter if you don't cover them in the tutorial. The preparation is co-production and co-creation and you are enhancing your own experience of the subject by engaging with the content. The other thing is, is I strongly endorse having watched all three videos, get yourself something nice, have a cup of tea or a coffee or whatever, get yourself a drink, something nice, because you've been through a fair bit, there's about an hour's worth of content here, congrats on getting through all of it, uh, welcome to the course, it's going to be fun, but one of the things I want to make real clear to you right from the outset is this is a very applied subject because education is a service. You're studying services marketing whilst you're engaged in the co-production of a service. So if it feels like you're soaking in it, you are. And with that, always check when you're reading a theory, when you're reading an idea on services, look around and go, is this in play at the moment? Should this be in play at the moment? So keep your eyes on your co-production and your co-creation because that's where you're going to get the value this semester in what you input and how it interacts with what I've created.